I must have been like really good for Christmas or something this year because I get to spend a couple of days driving around the 2019 Mercedes-Benz E450 4Matic wagon. Big shout out to Mercedes-Benz of Wilsonville for providing this car. Check out their website down below as well as their Instagram, Facebook. They are the only AMG Performance Center in Oregon and their inventory is absolutely insane. Well, I'm sure if you're anything like me, you're beyond excited to see this thing get on the road. So I'm not gonna waste any more time with this. Let's just cue the intro. I don't feel like I'd be doing this review any justice if I didn't first start by talking about the like, you know, wagon portion of the car first. So obviously this door is power operated and it's got the cool little foot thing pops open and that's deep, but that's not the coolest party trick. This cargo cover, when you open this door, automatically lifts out of the way. That way you can put things in and out a lot easier. I think that's pretty clever. But the absolute coolest party trick about the back of this car, a rear jump seat. That gives you two additional seats, which is a total of seven. And if my math is correct, that's two more than the GLE. Yeah, you could take that one, soccer moms. Moving to the exterior for just a moment, I wanted to talk about one option that I've actually really enjoyed over the last few days, and that is the AMG exterior line option. That gives us a couple of things. It gives us the ability to choose from several different AMG wheel options. In this case, we have these really good looking twin five spoke wheels, but it also gives us the lowered suspension with selective dampening. Now that ties in with a little button on the center console, so we can choose between comfort, sport, sport plus, etc. And obviously in comfort mode, that's your run of the mill daily driving mode. It's really soft. The transmission isn't really shifting all that aggressively. And you know, you can take your grandma out to the grocery store or whatever, but then you shift into sport plus the suspension stiffens up, but we'll demonstrate that feature here in a few minutes. And just in case you're wondering what's powering this beast, it is a three liter twin turbo V6. It's very similar to the C43 I reviewed a few weeks ago. However, we do lose a few of those precious little torquey torques. We have 362 horsepower, 369 pound-feet of torque, but that is no problem for this car. Made it to the nine-speed automatic transmission and four-matic all-wheel drive system. This thing certainly scoots. And the E-Class wagon, we have plenty of room. I'm about five foot 10. And as you can see, I've got plenty of room here. If you're about six foot two or three, I'd imagine this would still be a comfortable place for a long road trip. And these seats are, they're pretty comfortable. I've heard people complain about the fact that the bottom of the seat doesn't really come up and meet your legs, but that's never really bothered me. Moving to the driver's seat, we get to talk about all the fancy little buttons and technology packed into the 2019 E450. Most other cars that I've used have a touchscreen for Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which makes total sense because that's the way that they're designed to be used. That's not to say you can't use Apple CarPlay with the command wheel, this little touchpad, and then this little pad here. It's just a little bit more cumbersome. So I'll demonstrate that here right now. I can use the command wheel to scroll through my different options here, which is great. It seems to be pretty accurate. Each click equals one different icon on the screen here. But if we move to this touchpad, it's a little bit nicer because you can go down instead of having to go all the way right to go to the bottom icons, you can just use the pad to go down, which is nice. We have the home button here, which we can click to go back. We can go into our maps here. It's all fine and dandy. However, what I've found to be a little more difficult to use is this touchpad here, which we can use, but it seems to be a little jumpy. Like if I want, like I'll try and go to messages. So I'll go up one and then over. See, I overshot it. Uh, I don't know if you can see that, but I overshot it by quite a bit. It's a minor complaint, but I think that most people that will use this system will eventually get used to it. The touchpad, after a while, you get used to how much you move your thumb to get what you want. But one of the great things about this system now is that we have a favorite section. So I can click down on this button here on the wheel and it brings up a couple of options for us to quickly get to. Now, one of the ones that I like going to is the engine data. So we'll click that. And that's really cool because we don't have to dig through the system in order to find what we're looking for. We can go back to our favorites and let's say we want to adjust the color. Well, we can do that here with this menu and we can also set our new favorites or we can delete other favorites that we maybe don't use very often. And that makes the command system a lot easier to use for people because I can see how for people who don't like using systems like this, it's kind of frustrating to have to dig through menus and memorize where everything is. And they can just go in here and set up a favorite and go, you know what? I really use the camera option a lot. So I want to be able to just get to it immediately. Well, you can do that. Well, 
moving on to the driving portion of our review today, things get a bit fancier for us because this E-Class has the driver assistance package, which means we don't have to drive this car on the freeway. Well, actually, we kind of do. We have to still sit here and we have to put our hands on the wheel every once in a while because the car is like, oh, I'm not comfortable doing it for this long. All we have to do is turn the cruise control on using this button here on the steering wheel. Now, all that does is arm the cruise control. It doesn't actually do anything for us quite yet. Once we're at a speed that we're comfortable with and a distance between the car in front of us that we like, we just hit this set button here. Either up or down will work fine. And now it'll maintain our current speed. Even if we increase the speed on the cruise control, it won't get any closer to the car in front of us if it's within that distance that we have preset, which is this button here on the steering wheel. I don't know if you can see it on the GoPro, but it's right here. The coolest thing about this cruise control system is that it will actually make a lane change for us. So we're gonna demonstrate that here once we pass this semi truck. All we need to do is indicate which direction we wanna make a lane change. In this case, we're gonna go right, flip that right turn signal on. I'm gonna have my hands off the wheel and it's gonna make the lane change for us like that that's pretty neat if you're on a long road trip this is gonna be a really nice feature to have we're coming up on traffic here and I'm just gonna let the car take care of the speed for us as you can see it's braking I have I have my foot off of the brake right now what's really neat is it actually indicates here in the gauge cluster where I have the speed set and where the actual speed is right now and there's a couple of red bars in between the two um, letting you know that the car is actually slowing down um, below the speed that you have preset and this will do it all the way down to zero miles an hour and it will also accelerate for us in traffic, although if it sits for too long, you do need to hit the gas pedal to reactivate the system. The cool thing is if we have somebody in our blind spot and we try to make a lane change, the car won't do it. We will figure it out. Oh, there's somebody over there. So I'm, I'm not gonna put your life in danger right now. So we found some curvy roads here. I'm gonna stick this car in Sport Plus and manual mode and Test out the handling characteristics here for just a moment. So, oh man, it's got a lot of torque and in that corner coming out of it, it seemed to pull really well. So we're gonna hit this corner here, hit the brakes and we're gonna take it nice and gingerly here. Oh, yep. Oh man, <laughs> this thing handles really well. Wow! Transmission is nice. Of course, that nine-speed automatic is beautiful. And brake and downshift. Wow. That did not lose any traction around that corner, and I was giving it some beans coming out of there. Uh, man. <laughs> this thing's a lot more fun than I thought it was going to be. You wouldn't think climbing into this car, because in comfort mode, when you first drive off, it feels like a big sedan, and it's really comfy, which isn't a bad thing. I think that's how it should be. But then you shove it in Sport Plus and manual mode, and it just turns into a completely different car. Yeah, oh my goodness. Yeah. That's surprisingly good. This thing is just so much fun. And then we just go back in comfort mode and act like nothing happened. I wasn't just going 100 miles an hour around that corner, ma'am. I'm driving an E-Class wagon. You think this thing could do that? Huh. So I've brought you to a parking lot to demonstrate the self-parking feature of the 2019 E-Class. It's really easy. All we need to do is hit this little parking button down here throws the card into a search mode. We'll pull forward until we see the spot here between these two cars. Okay, there it is. I'm gonna record this on my phone because obviously the GoPro car can't see it. But right here, as you can see, that is the parking spot we want. So we're gonna accept it. We can either use the pad here on the steering wheel, we can use the touchpad or the command wheel. But in this instance, we're gonna use this guy right here. We're gonna say yes. And it's asking us to go into reverse, so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna hit reverse. And I am going to take my hands completely off the wheel and I'm not gonna have my feet on the pedals whatsoever. So let's see if the car can do it. All right, foot's off the brake. Obviously my hands are off the wheel. It's sensing with the parking sensors, obviously, so we don't hit anything. Uh, that red line, that's where the car is gonna stop. And then it's gonna switch into drive, which it just did. And it's gonna pull us forward. 
that's kind of a weird feeling because I've never had a car before that parks itself without needing to touch the brake or the gas pedal. So this is pretty neat. And it sees the Volkswagen. So it didn't like that. So now we're in reverse. It's going to recenter the car. That's pretty clever. And I haven't once touched anything. The car is doing all this all by itself. So it's going to the left. Obviously, it felt like we were too far to the right. So it's going to go that direction. And it sees the car on the left now. And it put itself in park. And that's it. Pretty sweet system. It works really well. But we can actually have it pull itself out. So let's say we, you know, we turn the car off. We leave, we go get some coffee or some pizza. We come back from doing our errands. We turn the car back on and we're feeling a little lazy. We don't want to pull the car out ourselves. All we need to do is hit the parking button right here once again. And now it gives us a different screen. It says, do you want to pull out right or left? Uh, I think in this case we'll go right. So all we need to do is either use the command wheel or the pad or whatever, and we'll hit right. Now it's going to prompt us to engage the reverse gear. So we're going to engage the reverse gear. It flips on the turn signal for us, letting people know we're actually going to be pulling out to the left. That's pretty nice. And I'm going to take my feet off the pedals. Now the car's doing the rest. So and as you can see that red line, that's where it's going to stop. And did a good job. So now it's going to engage drive and pull forward. And then once it's done, it's going to tell us to take control of the wheel and we'll have full control over the vehicle at that point. And there we go. The nice thing is that if at any point you feel uncomfortable with what the system is doing, all you need to do is grab the steering wheel, hit the brake, and the system will automatically cancel out. This is a really cool feature because, you know, I see if I hand the keys to like my father-in-law or my friend or my wife or anybody that may not be used to such a large car and might not be comfortable parking it, all you have to do is show them that button and it's really intuitive and you'll never have to worry about them scratching your bumpers or your wheels ever again. Well, it's been a few hours, it is now nighttime, and I wanna talk about the ambient lighting system in this car. Obviously, ambient lighting is not a new concept to Mercedes. In fact, it's not even a new concept to the automotive industry as a whole. Everybody's got some kind of system in their car, right? Well, the system in this is a little bit different. You have your 64 different colors on your color wheel you can set the entire cabin to, anywhere from white to red, blue, green, yellow, you name it, you can set it, forget it, and go. However, the climate control actually interacts with this lighting system in an interesting way. Let's say we're going down the road and I decide that I'm a little hot. Well, I would take my temperature and lower it. And this side of the car only changes because I've only set my temperature, obviously, and it changes to blue, letting you know that you have adjusted the temperature to a lower setting. Now, obviously, my passenger is probably going to be cold down because my air is going to be a lot colder. So oh, I'm going to change my temperature to be a little warmer. Well, guess what? Their side of the car now lights up red. Now, to some people, that might seem like a bit of a ridiculous feature, but in my opinion, if you're going to be sticking an ambient lighting system in your car in 2018, hell, we're going into 2019 now, you got to be doing something a little bit different. And having the climate control interact in that way, I think, is a nice cherry on top of the cake, and it shows that Mercedes-Benz has some great attention to detail. So, bravo. So my final thoughts on the 2019 E450 wagon. Well, I really like this car. I think it's perfect for somebody looking for, you know, obviously utilitarianism. This thing has a bunch of space in the back to fit stuff. It doesn't compromise on size like the crossovers do, like even like the GLC or the GLE. And you get an extra two seats in the back for small children, which is pretty awesome. You can haul seven people or you can fold all the seats back and put enough food back there to, you know, feed an entire village for a week. Then you can put it in sport plus mode, go around some corners, have some fun with your friends or even by yourself. And it's the perfect all around car, right? 
Well, tell me what you guys think down in the comments below. I'd love to engage with you. If I missed any features or if you want to go more in depth about something about this car, let's do it down there below. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like this video, you know, thumbs down. Big shout out to Mercedes-Benz of Bilsville. Once again, I'll leave the links down in the description to their website and their social media. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you have a safe new year. Drive safe and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.